All right, I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, the video has started. Today on DIY with Rai, we're building the lightsaber. So for those of you that know me, you'll know that I am a massive nerd when it comes to things like Marvel movies and Star Wars. In particular Star Wars, I've watched the movies multiple times over and I've watched a lot of the shows including Clone Wars, Rebels, and The Mandalorian. And I think as we can all agree, probably one of the most iconic film weapons has to be the lightsaber. For the longest time, I've wanted to build a lightsaber, actually even before I started this channel. But I don't want to take the classic route of building a cylindrical hilt connected to a cylindrical blade. That's just not for me. It's really cool, not for me. Perhaps my favorite lightsaber has to be the Darksaber. It's different in the fact that it's a very slender hilt connected to this machete samurai style blade. It looks like something that's completely different from any other lightsaber, and that's probably why I like it. So I'm going to use some of that to influence the design, which we're going to go over right now. And so this is my lightsaber design. As you can see, it's influenced by the Darksaber in the button area, some of the design features, the color, and where the lightsaber blade connects to the hilt itself. Uh, but some of the other design features that I thought were pretty unique were these gold bands and of course the walnut handle covers I guess you could say. Typically you'd, you never really see wood being utilized on a lightsaber. They're very metallic and there's not much going on in sort of natural elements usually and so this is where I just wanted to kind of change things up. One thing to note about these is that I did make one cover removable so that way we can get into the inside and there's a channel that goes through the entire lightsaber that allows for all of the electronics to be set inside and the buttons and wiring all of that can go through all right before we get too far into the project i wanted to take a minute to quickly go over all of the electronics that are going to be powering this thing to start off we're using a teensy 4.0 microcontroller board this is an Arduino or Python based microcontroller that runs the entire operation. Attached to that is the TNC prop shield. Now this is a plug and play board that has all of the motion sensing, uh, audio, and the uh, drivers for the lights. Attached to the microcontroller, you can see this little audio amplifier board. I added this for a specific reason pertaining to the setup. I'll explain that in a minute. And then attached to this audio amplifier, I have this little 8 ohm, 1 inch round speaker that's perfectly sized for this project. Now the LEDs that I'm using on this project are a programmable LED called NeoPixels. Um, that's one thing that I noticed when I was building this, is that there are two different types that you can use in something like this. Um, there are the NeoPixels, and then there are the dot stars. The differentiation between the two is just what little chip is inside the individual lights. And that's important to know which one you have just in terms of coding. Attached to everything we have the button that just controls the animations for up and down. And powering the whole thing is a four pack of rechargeable AA batteries. And I'm gonna wire in this little push stop button that'll completely cut all the power to the system when I'm not using the lightsaber at all. All right, let's give it a test. All right, warmed up, ready to go. So press the button, got the lights, got the sounds. If I swing the board, you should hear some swing sounds. All right, and power down. Sweet, ready to go. Many, many minutes later. I finally got all of the pieces that I will need for the lightsaber printed out. I ended up cutting them into different sliced sections just so they would fit on my printer. Now I need to glue up the ones that were sliced apart, so um, let's get to it. And 
And while gluing up the 3D printed parts, I noticed one area where the plastic would be kind of unsupported. And so you can see here, I'm adding a metal rod through the sides of the hilt in order to stabilize it a little bit better and give it more strength. It was also at this time that I realized I probably could have added a few more holes for the speaker. And so here you can see that I'm drilling out some holes where there weren't any, just so I could get better sound quality. So I'm in the middle of doing the priming, sanding, smoothing this thing out. Um, but one thing I wanted to take note of before I got too much further was that I need to cut out these holes a little bit more because the holes that I modeled uh, don't quite fit the buttons. Chucking up a metal grinding bit in my Dremel, I just went to town at removing a bunch of plastic in order to make the buttons fit. Every now and then I'd go back and double check that I wasn't taking out too much plastic by test fitting the buttons. And then before applying the final coat of paint on the lightsaber hilt, I went over and finally sanded all of the primer just to get everything nice and smooth and make it feel as close as I could get it to metal. All right, so I've got the lightsaber hilt painted. While that is drying, I'm going to cut down and mill up the wooden handle portion of the hilt. Um, you can see here, I already tested out what I'm thinking of doing for making it, since it's kind of a weird curved surface. What I'm gonna do is cut down the wood that I have, and then change the angle of my table saw to kind of cut out more material and get a little bit closer to the profile. And then I'll go to my belt sander and you know, round it off and then we'll move forward from there. So I just finished uh, rounding out one of the side pieces to the hilt, and now I need to cut a little groove, so that way I can fit all of the electronics components that are gonna be going inside the hilt. Basically what I'm gonna do for this is set up my table saw so I can cut out a dado um, in the middle of here. I've got it marked out where I need to cut out, um, and then I'll have to determine how far, or like how deep to cut out, and then I'll set up a couple of stop blocks so I can just keep going through and removing just a little bit of material since I don't have a data stack. And uh, yeah, it should work out. Let's get to it. For some of the smaller details on the lightsaber hilt, I elected to hand paint them versus taping off and spray painting, just because I have a lot of experience with model making in terms of model cars and model trains, and so this is actually really comfortable for me to do. 
And then finally, to protect all of my hard work, I sprayed every piece with two coats of clear coat. And then to access the electronics, I added magnets to the other side of the wooden handle in order to make it removable yet secure. And of course, once I got it to this point, I had to test it out. Oops, uh, no one tell anyone about that? Now that I've got the lightsaber hilt pretty much done as far as the construction goes, it's time to work on the lightsaber blade itself. And I've held off on this until the very end just because working with the Lexan acrylic is a little bit new for me. I've done a little bit with it in terms of making little windows for some of my model train buildings, but this is the first time that I've actually used it to build something like a lightsaber blade. And so I've kind of held off on it just because it's been a little intimidating. But I've been playing around a little bit with plywood templates to try and get an idea of the shape of the blade. Um, just so I have a better idea going forward of what kind of cuts I'm going to have to make and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're on to that, so let's get started. With all the pieces cut out, I started removing some of the protective backing on the acrylic pieces in order to laminate them together. Here you can see that I'm laminating together two pieces of clear acrylic. Now I'll talk about this at the end of the video, but I found out that this wasn't quite as necessary as I thought it would be. In order to put the lights into the center of the blade, I had to cut out a channel for them to sit in. I started out by drilling a hole into the end of the tang of the blade for the wires to go through, and then I used a jigsaw to cut out the entire channel where the lights would sit. Once I had the channel cut out, I laminated one piece of the black acrylic onto the blade in order to be a backing for the lights to sit against. Next I went over to the bandsaw and began cutting out the final shape of the blade. With the lights securely in place, I affixed the last piece of black acrylic and began final shaping. With the blade pretty much wrapped up, all I had left to do was to install the electronics into the hilt, button up a few more things, and I guess you could say my Jedi training was complete. It's done. Um, overall, I am, I'm, I'm basically speechless at this. Uh, it turned out so much better than I thought it would. A couple things that I will note, um, the blade ended up being quite a bit heavier than I thought it would be. Using two layers of clear acrylic was probably a little overkill. Um, it looks really cool and you get a good blade effect. 
However, it adds quite a bit of significant weight. And so what I'm thinking of doing is actually building another blade since I still have quite a bit of acrylic and just making it with one layer of the clear. That'll be something I build a little bit later on. But that's pretty much about it. Um, thank you for watching on this one. It's been such a fun build to put together. And I am honestly, like I said, I'm speechless on this thing. It's just so cool. If you like the video, please be sure to hit that like button. Uh, it helps me out a ton and subscribe if you guys are new. Until next time.